Hi, I'm Dr. Ted Rogers. This is History by the Plate. Spring is finally here, and that means dusting the pollen off of the grill and firing it up to make some hamburgers. But, contrary to popular belief, hamburgers did not come from, um, Hamburg. In matter of fact, though there is a connection, the hamburger is a distinctly American concoction. So how did this bounty on a bun come about? Let's check it out. In the early 1800s, Hamburg became famous for the quality of beef raised there. Restaurateurs often chopped the beef fine, formed it into patties, and cooked it immediately as refrigeration did not yet exist. They served it without bread as a steak. With the influx of German immigration to the newly formed United States, many German immigrants opened specialty food restaurants. In New York in 1837, Delmonico's restaurant opened. It featured a dish called a Hamburg steak. It was not, however, a chopped steak. Instead, it was a slice of round steak pounded to break the fibers of the meat. Onions were then fried, added to the steak, which was folded and pounded again, keeping the onions in the center. The chef then broiled this for two to three minutes and served it topped with butter, salt, and pepper, and served it without bread. By the 1860s, meat grinding technology improved to the point that the meat was often ground. When the second industrial revolution hit the United States in the 1870s, food cart vendors became popular, selling Hamburg steaks to factory workers. The problem was, assembly line workers on a brief break needed something easier to eat while standing. An enterprising entrepreneur, whose name has been lost to history, solved the problem by placing the Hamburg steak between two slices of bread. Voila! The birth of the hamburger. The word, referring to a ground beef patty in a bun, first made it into print in 1904. And as their popularity grew in World War I, after the U.S. entered the war, the government attempted to rename hamburgers as the Liberty Sandwich. White Castle became the first brick-and-mortar restaurant then to sell hamburgers in bulk in 1921. The cost was five cents apiece. Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle, recently published, caused White Castle to take extra steps, grinding the meat in front of the customers and having a fully visible kitchen in order to assure customers of the purity of the food. Today, the average American eats three hamburgers per week. I hope that this has been fun and informative. For more fun recipes, videos, and travel tips, visit our website at www.historybytheplate.com. Oh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is fun and free. Happy cooking!